Shalom, my homies. Welcome to another exciting episode of Stacking Triggers, a podcast for casual spikes like you and me and Bill. How are you? I'm not. I'm I'm not casual. You're not casual? Am, are you business no, casual? I am, I, I am below casual. Oh, okay. I, uh, I, I missed an opportunity for business casual competitive. Yeah, I gave you business casual yeah. and you're just like, I'm just going to blow through it. It's fine. Uh, I'm going to blow through it. Yeah. Nope. It's fun. Dan, how have you been? I've been okay. Uh, have been crashing out in one piece lately, so it's been great. I love it. Crashing out? like just... Yeah, uh, that's the new lingo, the new Gen Z lingo for, maybe even Gen Alpha lingo, for uh, losing your fucking mind. I, like, in a good way? Or no, like... in a bad way. Oh, okay, got it. Crash. Like, Think of, cr- just use, use some context clues, Bill. Crash. Cra- crash in the boys. I'm so sad. <laughs> yeah, so sad. Good thing I got Pilgrim reference. All right, on today's Thank episode, you. we of course have our Fortnite and Magic. Uh, we then have the whole Gen Con Secret Lair Showdown match loss slash match fixing slash match collusion drama that went down. We're going to talk about that from our perspective. Uh, a, from a level that we'll never reach in our lives. And then uh, I will talk about the One Piece ban list coming up uh, on release day. And then I also might also, a side note to that, I might do a, uh, a video after the ban list is actually formally announced and talk about what it means. But until that time, Bill, let's start with our Fortnites in card game slash magic. How's your Fortnite been? Uh, hit and miss. Uh, I came off of like two weeks that were like really fantastic into two weeks that were either bad or meh. Uh, so last week, I don't even remember the matchups, but I was on the Jund list uh, and I just did bad. I did terrible. I think I lost every game that night um, and just felt like a bad person. Um, I also... Yep. <laughs> that's, that's logical for me I, I lost in magic therefore bad person it was it was also like the, the past two weeks at work have been kind of really bad too and so unfortunately on my thursdays it plays a big plays big into my mental state when i'm playing sure. the game and uh did bad didn't care to remember it so i don't fair <laughs> Uh, and Dan, tonight we're recording a little early because it's mm-hmm. my 10 year wedding anniversary tomorrow and this weekend uh been been married a long time together even longer but wait did you say 10 uh, years jesus christ 10 years my dude i should uh, hey editor dan of the future put up the picture of bill rowing the boat backwards hell yeah yeah uh well, hopefully yeah, my re- butt's I, not I showing being at your wedding it was it was a time <laughs> yeah yeah that 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 was an event that was 10 years ago dan I can't believe it. And your uh, sister-in-law's boyfriend at the time uh, just went to go like his job was to go pick up sticks because we were, they were doing like centerpieces. And so like his job is like find sticks that he could break and then put in the centerpieces. So it's all woodsy and like cheap. And he just spent like five hours in the woods smoking weed instead. Oh, that one. Yeah, that okay. one. Got it. Uh, it was her, it was her husband, by the way. Oh, it was her husband at the time. Oh, damn. They were they were married at the time. Uh, well, good for her, I guess. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. So uh, we're recording Thursday, which is my modern night. Uh, tonight, I was playing Boris Energy minus a few cards. Uh, I had one Blood Moon instead of the three for the main board. Uh, so in replace of two of them, I did uh, two Alpine Moons. Uh, it just felt bad. Didn't really come up. Yeah. And uh I didn't have any arena of glories. Uh so I did the uh the fast lands and I look at you. Whatever that is, I can't see what that it's is. an arena of glory. Oh, gotcha. Um also I was missing one of the two elegant parlors. Uh so I did the land the Sunbake Canyon, so you can I get the that's roughly I wouldn't say it's mm. roughly equivalent, but like it it does it gets you a card. It's a card yeah. that is a land that is taps for those colors. 
Yeah, like I don't know. Like I was just like, whatever. I'm putting this together. I don't. I don't care. Um, but that was the main of the deck that was different. Uh, the sideboard was just atrocious. So we're not going to talk about it. Um, tonight, nine people. Round one by. Nice. Good start. I get the round. I get the round one by. Almost every single time there's a buy. It pisses me off. Um, and then I got paired down into a Boros Energy Storm deck. I don't know. They use Party Thrasher and Amulet and Empty the Warrens to be able to like convoke things out earlier than they should because Party Thrasher lets you convoke things in exile. Yep. I don't know. They can storm off. Um, crush them. Yeah, because you actually do things as opposed to them who do nothing. Oh my god, it was it was brutal. Um, Ragavan, still a good card. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's I, I, uh, just to touch on that for a little bit. Um, the only it's only bad matchup currently in the meta is actually just uh boros energy like we and one of the like in the murktide discord i'm in they were talking about ragavan it's like well here's the thing like if you're playing nadu and you play a ragavan like they have no way of really removing it outside of like dismember and uh do so, they like, really want to do a dismember on a on a 2-1 yeah do they want to like stop their plan to dismember a 2-1 uh maybe maybe not but like they generally don't want to trade their halfling into it uh because you're because they need to accelerate their mana so like generally if you have like ground creatures that are just kind of like rinky dink and your opponent also has just rinky dink ground creatures too just stack into it and you'll be fine because they they don't want to block because they need shit to combo with yeah but yes, I guess if you're Meta's heavy Boros energy, uh, don't even try. Don't even play it. Yeah. Don't even touch it. Just put it down. Yeah. Or if you know there's a ton of Bowmasters. Yes. Like Bowmasters is still very good against it. Uh, But like Bowmasters is I've seen taken a back seat for the most part. I think it's only really in the Demir Merktide and the Mardu energy deck. Uh, It should also be in Necrodominance. Oh, right. Yeah, that's one I've only played against like twice. The deck is apparently extremely hard and therefore people just don't play it. You, that's you what I've heard. Okay. I, I, right. I don't know. I, it's I also think it's kind of like out, like heavily outclassed by Nadu. Like I think Boros Energy, if it ducks Nadu until top de- uh, top eight, it can get into like it, it can easily just get in the top eight and just steamroll people. But right. like necrodominance, like you, there's a lot less, like there's a lot more agency, like in, from what I've heard, even more agency than there is with Murktide. And it's just like, holy yeah. shit, I can't even imagine. That sounds like my kind of deck, a pure glutton for punishment deck, where if I play poorly, I lose. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I steamroll them. Uh, I got to, to flip my, it was, it was a, it was a turn three a johnny flip did you uh, bolt a cat at, yeah i bolted a cat hmm. i used an entire lightning bolt on a two one that was my own that's fair as long as you attack yeah. first it doesn't matter no no i didn't attack first because i had amp i had amp raptor on the board guide of souls on the board and ragavan on the board he had a party thrasher so i flipped first um, and then took out his party thrasher with the oh, and then Johnny just hit trigger. him for a million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and got that's, a card. that's also fair. Yeah. Yep. So that was cool. Uh, it was fun because I was winning. It was fantastic. Um, and then uh, game three, because remember, I had to buy. Um, it was Rhinos. Uh, he had Flage in there, uh, so it was like it was like five color rhinos. He had Flage. He had Fire Ice. He had Fire like, Ice. Yeah, yeah. Um, both the Shartless Agent and Shirtless? the Shart. Yeah, he is not pooping. Shartless. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's a joke. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Yeah. And then um, the ardent plea. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like yeah. Bant, but with the red splash, like they yeah. just black cards or maybe they were just playing like a triome to hit leyline binding or something. They, they were playing one triome. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would assume if you're going to four color, there's no reason not to bring in a triome and then just have leyline binding as part of your removal suite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I didn't know if he was running. Um, so that's actually the only game where the uh, Alpine Moon came into play because I actually had one game one game one. I kept kept a terrible hand i saw like a turn one ragavan and i was like on one and with one land and i was like oh, oh i'll the, get there the classic yeah i was like oh i'll get there i have card advantage maybe yeah and then they not, just go not not, uh, not, not okay, in the gone, energy. or no dead and then you're just like well shit uh what did he do uh or i think he, ending. no i think he just ended up leyline binding it that's yeah, great bad. for you. No, that's it's great fantastic. for you. That, that's like that's like the best removal spell they could possibly use on that for you. Of course, like I you guess. have nothing else going on after that, but like I had absolutely best. nothing. I had a handful of two drops and no mana. Leyline binding saying exile target permanent, uh non-land permanent is uh really strong. And uh them using that on a two one, you're pretty fucking yeah. happy about. I was pretty happy, but also didn't draw land for the entire game. Yeah. Uh, yeah the classic. So, I've done that before. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was good. Uh, did not. Did not be good. Uh, game two. Uh, I did win. What did I do? Did you get that vexing bobble out? Nope. Didn't see vexing bobble once. I had a, I had one vexing bobble on the sideboard as a. Eh, I'm just going to throw it in here. Uh, really could have used more than one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also didn't know this deck was going to be there today. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. Like um, the, the game happened in a way where I just curved out and gave my big stuff flying with the guide of souls. Yeah. And then they, he's like, <laughs> he's yeah. like, well, I can't do anything about that. Yeah. Their deck does not handle flyers. That's why Murktide was actually a good matchup for rhinos because outside of ledger shredder, but like, you make them waste all their bite. Like you just, if they slam like uh, two rhinos on the board and you're just mm-hmm. like, all right, cool. I have two, f- I have two flying DRCs. What do you yeah. do about it? And like, all right, I'll throw down a ragavan to block. What are you going to do about this? Right. Layla and binding the ragavan. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, yeah, like- I also, I also got Jeggy uh, Gigantha out too. Yep. Uh, so that was helpful. Yeah, because it hard stone walls one rhino at a time. Yeah, like I, I mean, granted, if they get it out with ardent plea, uh, like you have to trade it, but yeah, that sucks. But whatever. Um, game three, uh, they just I built my board out. They they got on curve rhinos, uh, so they were on the play. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they on curved the rhinos out. I built my board up with two um, Amp Raptors, a Guided Souls, and I put in there, just because I didn't know what else to put in for my sideboard, is a, uh, oh, Esper Sentinel. That's it. I had, I had a couple of Esper Sentinels. Hey, there's been a lot of storm at, at the shop. I wanted card sure. advantage against those matchups. That was really it. That's all I had. Sure, I don't. I, it wasn't great. I, I think it's pretty terrible. I I think that's actually like actively horrendous. It wasn't great. I got to draw two cards off of it. Hey, sure. He, I mean, which was nice. It's it wasn't enough, unfortunately, because um, he ended up getting his uh, brotherhood's end and just wiped my entire board. So, kind of sucked. Deck kind of needs like board wipe protection. Um, no, it's the similar problem you have with Convoke at Magicon Chicago, where it was like, I don't know when to stop throwing shit on the board. And it's just like I had to I had to throw shit on. I had to throw shit on the board, though. I understand. But uh, yeah, if they pyro like if they pyroclasm or Brotherhood's end, you're just kind of like fucked. If you have uh, if you just put everything you've had on the board. Yep. 
Well, un- unfortunately, like it was just everything just kind of spilled out from the uh, uh, raptor. Amp raptor. Yeah. yeah. So it's like uh, either it's gone in exile forever or I get it. So, yeah. Yeah, is what it is. Um, so I lost that. Uh, breakers were terrible tonight. Uh, you had to buy, of course. And you got pared and- down. I, I had to buy, got pared down. The guy that pared down won. But the other guy I just I lost to the Rhinos player, he also had a buy. Uh so it was just trash breakers. Yeah. Yeah, you're not gonna yeah. you're not gonna do well with that. Yeah, but- I, I got to see that Nadu was there. Um we had Jess Guy Control uh and the new Yog variant that's out. Uh, so those were the on, no one's those were the on actual the meta area. decks. Yeah, those were the actual meta decks. The Yog variants interesting because they run a few copies of uh, the two mana black enchantment that lets you bring stuff back. Uh, Chitonia Nightmare. Yeah, I don't I couldn't remember how to pronounce it. Um, but yeah, that was it. Fun times. Uh, it's definitely picking up at the store, though. We're seeing new faces like every week, mm-hmm. uh, which is which is cool. How about you? How'd you do? Well, for me, two weeks ago uh, or two Wednesdays ago, uh, we had like sixteen people, sixteen or seventeen people for our uh, modern night, and I went one two. I lost to God, I can't remember what I lost to. It wasn't good. Like there they weren't anything that where I was like, uh, eh, this is like horrendous for me, or like, oh boy, I really need oh, one of them was like Boros Energy, and it's like, don't know how to beat this. Just still have no idea how to beat this. So uh, I'm just gonna continue to suffer and die. Uh but I did beat Nadu uh two one. It was interesting it was my first time playing the matchup so i only had my theory and my theory generally worked it was just uh murktide doing murktide things in game two where it just doesn't get to the pieces it needs which you know happens um mm-hmm. but i draw i went one two drop and i'm like i'm i'm over this like I don't, I don't need this and then i go to the rcq that was this weekend i go o2 uh i played a demir murktide mirror in round one and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Literally the only other person on Demir Murktide? What the fuck is this? Uh, How did we carry each other? There was one other person also on Demir Murktide. But how many people? 42. 42. And you paired into one of two other Demir players. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, what was funny is because this is the store where uh, somebody in the Discord was like, hey, so we can we switch the format from modern to sealed? So. Like the person who the the person who works at the store who like responded to that, I'm like, I'm like, hey, ma'am, uh, I don't know if anyone's going to show up to this modern RCQ considering that Nadu's not banned. Like, can we switch the format real quick? And he just like, shut the fuck up, you know, like, <laughs> but yeah, 42 people showed up. Uh, the top eight was five Nadu, one Jess guy control, one Demir Murktide. I, and it was not the person I played, which is why I think that, which is why I know there was at least one other Murktide. And then I mm-hmm. can't remember the, f- the f- eighth one. Um, I think it would have an energy variant. So, I mean, that, that generally mm. makes sense. Uh, although somebody did say, Oh yeah. Somehow Demir made it into top eight. And I just want, it was like, uh, the store's resident 14 year old cocky kid who <laughs> top eight, who tops a lot. Uh, but he was like, yeah. Yeah, somehow Demir made, I think he was trying to like piss me off, but, uh, yeah. He said that kid, he topped Ford. He played what, so what was funny was he played Jake Beardsley, uh, in top eight. And then in top four played another person on the pro tour or who another person who's like played ah. on the pro tour before. And he's like, Man, I played like the two best players in a row. And it's like, I, I don't want to hear your excuses, man. Win the yeah. event. Win the event. Yeah. No one cares. Of course, yeah, giving play him shit. magic. Play magic better. Come yeah, on. play magic better. But uh, so the Demir Merktide matchup, I won game one. Uh, the, the entire matchup revolves around like 
who can resolve and protect their Murktide first? Game one, it was me. Game two, it was them. And game three, it was also them. Game three was especially terrible. Like game two, I actually did punt. Like I, I, I made a mistake. I had a subtlety in hand and should have evoked it for to stop their Murktide. Mm -hmm. Didn't for some reason. Game three, I just drew like eight lands with like Ugh. no action. And it's just like. That's, and also it was weird. He had like every time I tried to play a Bowmasters, he just went, all right, Bowmasters from like either Bowmasters in response or like uh draw like main phase bowmasters and like how how are we here how do, you I, always I, have how, it? how do you just have them every time it doesn't make any sense he also boarded in narset and he, he he main boarded tamio and i was like I'm losing to this deck i'm losing to the tamio deck come on I don't know how I lost to the Tamiyo well, deck, but he played Tamiyo. I, I hate Tamiyo in Demir. It it doesn't do anything. And there's just you, infinite more things you'd rather do on turn one. So I like Tamiyo against like the Boros deck. Because it reduces their clock greatly, right? Yes. The but like you also have to be built for that. So like your vexing bobbles, your I think it's a much better shadow card. Not vexing bobbles, I'm sorry, uh Mishra's bobbles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Like, I think it's I, I think it's better in shadow because you're already running street wraiths to help get you to draw cards. You're already running the bobbles because of the nether coifs. Maybe. Like maybe. but I also wouldn't do a full four and I wouldn't I, I would maybe only do two. Yeah, and I hate that your one drop is a two of, so I just don't even want to play it in the front. Like, I'd rather just play two other cards instead of a, a, a two of one and shadow, drop. Everything's a one drop except for uh, the frog. True. I mean, uh, except for Psychic <laughs> Frog. Yeah. The best Psychic Frog. frog good. Um, then game two, or round two, I played against uh, Naya Energy, and it was just like the Boros Energy, but with, like Malevolent Rumble and Elish Norn, and I'm just like, how the fuck am I losing to this deck? Like, how like, do I lose Elish to this Norn. deck? I don't understand. Uh, Elish Norn. Too, I, I made a, a, a horrible mistake. They went Malevolent Rumble, and I went Force of Negation on Malevolent Rumble. And I'm like, afterwards, I'm like, why the fuck did I do that? That makes no sense. Just let them have the card. Who cares? Yeah. So It does ramp them slightly. It, uh, it, it searches them a card and then gives them a mana. So, like, I in the and moment, I see what I was deep. doing. But, like... It, it, who yeah. fucking cares? Just let them resolve them 11 rumble. Like I could have just stopped the static prison from there. If I stop the static yeah. prison, the game's over. But instead, well, it, I didn't. it gives you it gives you intel too, right? Like because you get to see what they pick. Yeah, I mean, it's a one card pick. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think the intel is that important. But yeah, uh, I I can't beat an energy variant to save my life. Uh, so but I, I tried. I've been trying to like figure it figure that out i'm watching some videos trying to figure it out so we'll see so, uh and the then, only thing i can think of is toxic deluge uh so new variant i tried uh main decks toxic Va deluge uh i took out oh for the rcq i played two stern scolding main because i was like hmm. oh this is going to be exactly for the the energy matchup it came up in the merc time matchup it never came up against energy and i'm like this is fine like but like my problem is not interacting with them on the stack it, because I, I, I like hate having to always have to hold up mana and not actually make any mm -hmm. proactive plays. So like the new variant brings in Toxic Deluge over Stern Scolding and it brings back in a Spell Pierce. So I yeah. do that. Uh, and this week I played against uh, Jund round one. It was Nethergoyf, Tarmogoyf, you know, Hell uh, yeah. Versus Saga, you know, Murktide's oh, least oh, favorite Oh, good deck. Jun, not my Jun. Yeah, good Jun. So, <laughs> I win game one pretty convincingly. Uh, he, I just counter all of his his stuff, and then because I have Fatal Push versus, like, Lightning Bolt slash Unholy Heat, I can just answer his goifs whenever the fuck I want to, uh, and slam a Murktide and protect it. Game two... Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't protect my Murktide very well, and he just go like he's just able to remove it, and then like just draw dead, and it's like, all right, yeah, I've had enough. Let's just go to game three. In game three, it was uh, 
resolve a harbinger of the seas which is in the sideboard and i kind of like it just like just for like that and also yeah. like against like nadu and like any of the energy variants yes the energy decks the run three color three variants basics. not like the two color if i if i no, if even I, the, even the two even the two colors you should be good because they only run three basics and if they don't have them or fetch them right away you, you should be all right yeah although the the problem of course becomes like do they float them do they float a red to be able to you know discharge Kill or it. whatever yeah. yeah but uh i yeah against like the three color decks in the format i definitely wanna, i feel like i want to bring that in um round two i play against Jeskai control. I don't win that matchup. Uh, I punted in both games. I also was like hyper unfocused because like it's just like your control match where it's just like they let you kind of do some stuff and then they stop letting you do stuff. And also, I wasn't like have I didn't have any answers to their answers. So it's just kind of like eh. I didn't really ever like pressure them to force them to use answers like they use prismatic. Mm-hmm. And they're one of prismatic ending on my first frog. And it's like okay of course you have that why would you not have that they uh you know like i i throw out like bow masters right after right when they play right right when they tap ring and it's like all right this will kill you and it's like no i have the exact answer for this too of course because of the one ring but Mm. um i don't know there was a a point in game two where they went ring to replace a uh, ring with four, four counters on it. And I had, um, can sign a memory in hand. Don't know why I didn't cast it. I, they, I knew they had counter spell in hand because they showed it to me and I went, mm. so what it really should have, and I two man up. So I should just go like consign to memory replicate. And that way, like you have to have exactly double counter spell or like counter spell plus spell pierce in order to counter this. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have it, you just, you like you don't this ring re- does not resolve and then you probably just you will, you will take too much damages because like yeah. i had like uh f- four total power on board with an orcish bowmasters and a three three army so it was like hell yeah you're going to lose next turn but, but i they, they I did missed the ring it and uh they won I, I was just unfocused like that's my only takeaway from that although all <sighs> I have to figure out if people are actually playing Tron in this goddamn meta, because if people are playing Tron, then I have to keep him break the ice. But if they're not playing Tron, then I'm taking away, taking out the break the ice and probably playing like at least one. I could probably actually just break in one mystical dispute anyway, over a break, over one break the ice, because I know people are playing just sky control. And it also is a card for Nadu. Well, so here's my thing, right? So you have, the harbinger in there anyway mm-hmm. so you should be all right break the ice is a bit better because stone raining people is way better it's way better yeah but it's like because the way that tron and eldrazi get around you uh uh blood talisman essentially is just yeah. casting rings like, because they, uh, they just to, get the four get mana. Them, They're just yeah. like, all right, here's a ring. And you're just like, hope I have force of negation. Yeah, really, really hope they ban the ring. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of getting there, too, where it's like they're actually like there is counterplay to the ring and there's counterplay. But the the ring makes bad decks seem good. Yeah, I it also makes bad players seem good. Like I, I actively believe that the control play, like most of the control players are actually fucking horrendous and are just heavily ballooned by the ring because they just like it's like a Nell in one piece where like they can play the greediest fucking build you've ever seen in your entire life. And it's like, it doesn't matter. I have a ring or with an L. It doesn't matter. I have a, a, a leader ability that lets me uh, heal myself. Yeah. And then, you know. So like it's it's to me, it's the same. It's kind of the same thing. And that's kind of why like I don't like that play pattern. Like I, I already I don't like an L when it comes to one piece and I don't like the ring because of the same thing, because it's just like, here's a whole turn where you can't do fucking anything. Right. 
Well, and and we we've, we've seen it too. Like even before this meta, right? Like there were the um, the other Tron, right? Tron and mm-hmm. what else plays it? Uh, Titan, right? Titan was playing it, I think. Tron Titan breach combo. Um, yeah. Yogg was playing it at one point two. Basically, if you were like any kind of combo deck where it was like, oh, I don't have my combo. I need one more. I need my. I need, one, I need one more, more turn. turns. I yeah. will just play this ring, so that way I can yeah. potentially see more turns. Yeah, and, and like if they, like, it should have been printed on the card. There can only be one copy of the ring in the deck in yeah. a deck. It should have been printed on the card like that. That I think would make it much better because then people have to do weird stuff to recur it through the graveyard to not die to the damage uh, it, right? I, th- I think what then happens is that phyrexia metamorph just hits the meta that's fine that's a that's like something else though right like that's a creature spell that's something else like you could subtlety that it's fine is that true it's it's a creature, right? Phyrexian Metamorph is a creature. It, it is an artifact on this, creature, but like I'm wondering on the stack, on the stack on the, what it is. Because I think it says stack, it enters as, as it as it I think it's as it enters the battlefield. Then in that case you are correct. Uh Phyrexian Metamorph. Sorry, Gather is taking forever. Shockingly. It, can we talk about this app really quickly while while I'm doing this? Uh, can it stop fucking logging me out every round? Oh, the companion app? Yeah. How it's a fucking piece of shit? Yes. Yeah. You may have Phyrexian Metamorph enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield. So yeah, if, like, against, like, Nadu, you just stern scolding it because you're bringing in stern scolding against Nadu. Or, yeah. like, uh... Back in the day, back in the old Merktide day, like in like the Izzy Merktide days, you would just annul it, <laughs> yeah. which is great. So yeah, like I, I, th- I think I'd be okay with that. Like if decks were just like, all right, we're running one copy of the Ring and then four and then three copies of Phyrexian Metamorph, or, or th- there's other things that it could be running. You could be running as as well, right? Like there's ways to recur it from the graveyard back to the battlefield or whatever but it's multiple card it's multiple cards that are bad just to enable the ring right yeah i'm okay with that <laughs> yeah i i think an outright ban is probably just better uh but i like, i agree they will probably like if it gets hit it will be an outright right ban i think yeah. the i was talking to somebody tonight about this and they were saying like the only format where things are restricted is vintage yes and yeah, Wizards does not restrict in, yeah, uh, so, in non-vintage yeah. formats. Right, yeah. And, as much and as I think a, it has to do with the power, like the power yeah. nine or whatever. Yeah. I I came from Yu-Gi-Oh! And I firmly believe that restricting copies is something that Wizards should employ, but refuses to for some reason. Like, uh, I, I, and I guess it comes down to like, oh, if there's only one copy of the one ring and your opponent sees it, it's like, oh, this super feels bad. There's this, this is your only copy, but it's like, I mean, it's also variance. So like, whatever, like they're like yeah. for every deck, they for every time they see it, like how often do they not see it? You know? Right. Yeah. So, and so but like, it's also it's like it's a one of in 60. Your chance to draw it is like not great. Yeah. Uh, you have to really work towards it if it's a key piece. Um, it would drive the price of it down as so fucking fast. I don't know uh, about that. It's a staple in Commander because people just it's it for the same reason that it's good in modern. Yeah, that's true. Like, it's I, I'm sure it would drive down the price. I'm sure it would still be around like fifty bucks, especially because I'd be okay with like, it. Fifty bucks limited print run too. Mm-hmm. In, yeah. in essence, like Lord of the Rings, I opened a lot of Lord of the Rings, and also I have my four copies of Lord of the of the One Ring. But, yeah. um, you know, th- who knows the next time they're going to be able to reprint that set or anything yeah. from that I, set. I see what I ended. I, I sold out of mine when they were like, 
what they're like 120 or something jesus yeah i don't blame you yeah it's, it, like, yeah because like that, that's a, i only had two ton of money. yeah i only had two and so like it bought my oscillate prides mm -hmm. for the energy deck i don't think oscillate pride is going to take a hit at all no it's so anti. i don't think anything from boros energy is going to take a hit like um the only thing i could potentially see is flage but Flaging. like you don't even need flage for the deck to operate it just becomes a so, pure aggro deck at that point which is fine yeah I, i'm fine with it being exactly. a pure aggro deck i the it was what i talked about we talked about it before with burn and i'm sorry we're, we're we've gone from fortnite and magic to like banlist potential talk but like yeah i talked about it with burn whereas like burn at some point runs out of inevitability like eventually mm -hmm. it just runs out of damage and you just need something to do. And flage in burn is something you can do. Yes, it's a three mana lightning helix. Yeah, that kind of sucks. But like if you're on four man, if you're on four lands and you're just like, I got nothing going on, I'll just make a six, six dude. And gain life and kill something that you yeah, have on the and board, like kill something or like dome you. So that way, like my next the next burn spell I draw is like kills is lethal. You. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like. It's a similar it's a similar ish concept, although uh, Flage synergizes with Ocelot Pride plus Guide of Souls. Like, yeah, that, that makes that like I said it the last time we talked. I, I think if you look at the pieces of Boros Energy. Dog shit deck like the, the, the cards are yeah. pretty much all dog shit, except for like Terrible. Flage, Fable. And like maybe like a Johnny and then but like you cut you pair it with everything else and it's just like Jesus Christ. It's Jason Bourne. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that that was my just guy control is uh that led the band talk was uh it didn't go well. But I, I, again, I was also unfocused round three. I played against Nadu. Uh, I won that matchup 2-0. And uh, because I won so fast, we just played like three game ones in a row. I won <laughs> one of those game ones. And w another one I kept like there's a hand where it's like force of negation, force of negation, sink in the stupor, arc me, just charm three lands. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I mean, I could keep this and I'm going to keep it because this fu this fucking game doesn't matter. I'm ju I just want to see. And it's just like, no, it's the standard Merktide thing where it's like, if you have only interaction and no pressure, you lose. And yeah. there is uh, so you need like a blend of interaction plus actual pressure. Like the games that I won, I got Merc tied down on like turn four. Oh, and nice. like was able to stunt anything my opponent was doing. And the games that I lost, I didn't see Murktide or I didn't see Psychic Frog and like my only pressure was like an Orcish Bowmasters which is like overall I think the problem with Demir Murktide is that like your best cards are Murktide and Psychic Frog and if you don't see those cards you're just in a world of hurt yeah yeah Bowmasters feels especially bad too because I think there's only two decks that really just draw cards and I, I think that's the mono black, mono black, uh, yeah. yeah, mono black, whatever they do, necro, um, mono black, necro, Dom. necro, that's it. Um, and then they the run, control decks with the one ring, yeah, they run uh, necro dominance plus the one ring because why the fuck not? Yeah, yeah um, why not? But yeah, so like that's that's the way to be Nadu on the Merktide side is actually like have interaction plus pressure. Like and I really appreciated that, that like the just a bunch of game ones afterwards. I was just like, yeah, fuck yeah! Like I I want reps on this. I want to see like what hands are actually good, what to keep. He learned a lot from the the Demir Merc like for the Demir Merc type matchup because there are morons like me who just jam the deck. You know, <laughs> there, there were apparently three people at an RCQ playing Merc Tide, and he's like, I played enough Jess guy control. Like at one point, the fourteen-year-old came over. He's like, "Hey, come on, play! I want to play Nadu. You play me and Jess Guy Control." He's like, "No, no, no! I don't. The matchup's so uninteresting to me. This is like way more interesting, and I need and I need this practice. Yeah. And like, that's the kind of shit I've been looking for in the Magic community in my area is for people to be like, "Hey, does anybody just want to just 
jam Boros energy versus Jeskai control. Can anybody just do yeah. like anybody just want to sit here for like three, four hours and just jam these games with me? Like, yeah, that's what I've always wanted, because one, the One Piece community does that where we're just like, hey, I have Black Yellow Luffy. I want to play against Red Purple Law. I have Black. I have uh, Black Rob Lucci. I want to play against uh, Green Jewelry Bonnie. You know, you we yeah, do that I kind think... of stuff, but like, there's nothing like that from the Magic side that I've seen. I think some of it is part of how old the Magic community is, and the kind of like the older tournament styles, right? Like you would like there was always like a Grand Prix or something going on. Uh, you know, before the COVID times mm -hmm. where players could just, it was like all the time they were going to these competitive events. They didn't want to like be showing just everybody, you know, what they're running and how they're playing. They're trying to keep their spice a secret. Right. Right. Whereas now it's like, we don't have that as much, but we still have that kind of older mentality of, I want to keep it secret. Like tonight, like, I, I teased in the Discord new week, new deck for me because like I don't know, every two weeks I'm on a different deck. Yeah. And um you know, but I didn't offer up for some reason what I was playing. That's fair. I'm also like I'm also one of the few people though that also just play meta decks. Or well, close to meta decks. Yeah, that and that's a general problem I have with your store is that like People aren't playing enough meta decks. Uh, speaking of which, uh, round four, I played against Mill, and I knew they were a Mill player because they uh, they went. To, there's a Gorios player at our store, and they went to time two times last night. And I'm like, man, it's not that fucking deep. Like you're playing Gorios. You're not playing. You know, it's not like this is a Jeskai control mirror. Right move like move like play the game please stop like, the, stop the slow play stop fucking going to time you're playing gorios like your job is to like control until control boards and hands until you can slam a gorios vengeance that's it yeah like exactly. what's hard about that sorry uh i i also don't think that deck is any good like oh he gorios uh did top that was the, that was the final deck the top but like and it was the same guy but like, I'm it's just not like, that good, but it did it, talk. <laughs> it, it talk, but like, I say that from like a Merktide perspective, where it's just like, right. what the fuck does this deck even do against Merktide? Like, how does it even beat Merktide? Like, I don't see how it ever beats Merktide, ever. Yeah. Like, I played against it in uh, my top eight at the uh, RCQ that I play that I got my pin at, and my opponent fucking didn't do anything. And anytime they tried to do anything, I was just like, all right, here's a counter spell. All right, here's a spell snare. Here's a spell pierce. And this is like, what do you do? You, you don't do anything. And I'm just like, here's an 8 8. Have fun. <laughs> what do you do? You don't do anything. Okay, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what you're doing. So, like, it's, I, and the deck hasn't changed. I, get, I think it's got, I think they've now put in like Psychic Frog, and it's like, okay. So you actually have like an alternate win con that isn't just like, boy, I sure hope this grief lives. Right. <laughs> but, Boy, I yeah. hope this grief lives. Um, so I play against Mill, and uh, let me tell you what beats Mill. Uh, knowing that they're a Mill player, and then <laughs> keeping uh, two lands plus Murktide in your opening hand. Yeah. Wins every time. Don't... Actually, that's not true. I, turn, I, I, turn, I, turn two Murktide every time. Turn two, turn three Murktide every time. Although, uh, in games one, two, one and three, I went, all right, uh, turn two, frog, go. And it's like, all right, yeah. you got to deal with my frog now. And I'm like, all right, I'll deal with your frog now. I'm like, cool. Uh, here's an 8 8 Merc Tide. Have fun. Have fun. Um, in game two, I punted a bit. I went Merc Tide. I went, they went. So I had three lands. And then on the following, I had three, I had three lands. Two of them were tapped. And then I had a fetch. So I fetched to get like my third land. And um, they archive oh. trapped me. And I pitched for force of negation and I shouldn't have done. I should have just let the archive trap resolve. Be, and I think it was just PTSD from that time that I had three archive traps resolved on me in the same turn. Oh I, I've never I've never been more mad in my entire life. 
Uh, but oh. so like I shouldn't have I shouldn't have done that. I should have just held it because in their turn they go like drown and lock. And mm. because the mill, it it actually is one of those spots where drown and lock is still good against Murktide. I didn't right. have like if I if I had Psychic Frog plus Murktide, I'm just like get rid get of all this, out of the graveyard. Get rid of all this <laughs> shit. I don't need any of this. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, who cares? My Murktide lives now. But yeah, I so I I didn't play around that that specific interaction, and then they milled my other Murktides. Uh, I did a count of all my threats. It was like, okay, I have zero psychic frogs left in deck. I have zero Murktides. I have oh, uh, Jesus. I have a bowmasters on the battlefield already, and I have another bowmaster still in deck. All my subtleties are gone. Yeah, this game's over. Let's just pack this up. And then, yeah. Oh know. my god. But yeah, so that that was a mistake that I sh- I just should not be making, and I don't know why I made it. I just did it. Like, yeah, I don't know. But I fixed it for game three. I I made an eight. I made a six six Murktide. It was just like, all right, here we go. And I almost the thing is that I almost won game two because they went Jace the um, perfected mine. Oh. And I just went, all right. Uh, th- and they went Jace draw effect. And I'm like, all right, here's Bowmasters. And they're like, oh, no. And they're like, oh, no. Uh, and they're thinking and they're tanking. And it, it their Jace gets put down to one. And I'm like, all right, the fir- the ETB trigger is going to target the Jace. And then they're just yeah. like, OK, uh, that ETB trigger on the stack fatal push and I'm like oh, shit now i don't actually have a clock because i'm only going to have a one one work versus their uh crab and they're at like five life or like five or six oh. life and it's just like this this needed to happen because then i dome them for three and then i have a three three plus a one one and i'm just like all right here's a one one here's a three three this will kill your crab go but unfortunately that doesn't happen so like you yeah know, it was what it was but yeah, it happens. Live and learn. Uh, so yeah, three one. Uh, somehow got first. Every all the three all the threeos lost. Like everyone, everyone lost. Like the Jess guy control player I, I beat lost to somebody. Don't know who. And the other three ones were the Nadu player and the Mill player. <laughs> so like I just had the best breakers because like yay the like three of the four people I played had had three one records. So I was just like years first and like. Okay, nice. cool. So, I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm feeling good going into the RCQ on Saturday, because I have another one Saturday, because of course I do. Um, of course. One the following week. I, You know, if I could just do one every week, that's great. But I, I, I'm okay. It's just like, do I bring in mystical disputes? Because, like, I feel like Jeskai Control is going to be more represented than Eldrazi. I believe at least when you're up here, it will be because uh, our, our our RCQs are starting to happen. Mm-hmm. And there was multiple uh, Jeskai control mirrors at the one last weekend. Yeah, so uh, here here's so- all my potential playables for. For any Mer- <laughs> for my Murktide variants. Plus Jeskai yeah. control. There's a little bit of Jeskai control in here too. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, so I, I'm I'm close to having Jeskai control done. But uh, yeah. So for now, uh, I think this butte goes back in probably probably at least one over a break the ice because like, you know. Yeah, I could make or break the game. I hate you. I love <sighs> you. All right. Uh, so with all that talking out of the way, it's time for more talking. Let's talk about the whole Gen Con debacle. So I'm going to do my best <sighs> to um, summarize some statements here because these are long, verbose statements. Very so, talky. Uh, there was a player uh, who played in the Secret Lair Showdown. I'm not going to give names because there have yep. been issues with like attacks and cyberbullying because of names dropped in uh, other statements and other posts. And that's the last thing we fucking need is people like witch hunting people based off of, yeah. you know, what some person says. So uh, a player made it to Sunday, the final event or the, the the championship top 32 at part of the Secret Lair Showdown event where you begin actually competing for the Dark Ritual. Uh, they won a feeder contest in from Thursday, Friday or Saturday. 
into the Sunday event. Yep. Um, they talk about equity swapping. I've legitimately never heard of equity swapping in my entire life, but also that's because I've never gotten in a position to, uh, for anybody to be like, Oh, I'm going to, would you like to equity swap for like something? And uh, yeah, you know, I'm bad player, but, uh, (laughs) they said they would, they were not going to accept any equity, equity swapping. So they go into the event owning a hundred percent of themselves. They advanced to top eight. After they finished their thir- their round three, one of their friends uh, asks a question regarding equity, buying equity. Uh, mm-hmm. This person claims, I didn't understand what they were talking about or asking or offering. But they know what the equity sharing is. So, I mean, that's weird. Yeah, but- they were saying, I, I do want to call out like in that statement, they did call out that they were like still kind of in the game zone. So they weren't 100% paying attention or something i don't know yeah so uh judges come over and they're like hey what's going on because this sounds like collusion is happening and then the judge walks away and then uh goes to the head judge and event organizers and it's like hey i think i found somebody who is colluding uh this is me filling in from uh the second statement i'm going to read then they come back and say hey you player are uh, being given a match loss for particularly this match uh, because we heard of potential outside collusion and we don't want any of that. So uh, your tournament ends in top four. Uh, And then, of course, uh, let me see here. They appeal to the head of pastimes who eventually does release a statement. That's the next statement I'm going to give or summarize, uh, I did not fully understand. So their final thing says, I did not fully understand the rules and presumably said the wrong things to the judges. The final prize sold on site for $48,000, a life-changing amount of money. I prepared for this tournament for months and flew to Indy in hopes of being able to have a chance to play in the finals. And in the end, I was not allowed to play, even though I said no. So uh, that's that. Now, uh, Pastimes put out a statement being like, hey, we don't agree with what, uh, this person said, but they offer no specific examples of why they said that. So instead, mm-hmm. the tournament, the event organizer uh, offered their own Google Doc statement, basically stating that they they had, uh, as in past times, uh, heard a lot uh, so about uh, collusion slash bribery. So what they so. It, their second paragraph uh starting before the last round of the thursday secret lair showdown qualifier the head judge of the event received a report from a player that they had overheard two other players discussing possible bribery bribery and collusion in the last round i was brought the same concern at the stage the head judge initiated an investigation and the specifics are paraphrased below a player in the final round asked their opponent to scoop into the championship for a cut of their prizes. They intended to do this as much as possible with their friends to get the highest likelihood of someone in the group making top eight and winning the dark ritual. So uh, they look for it on uh, Friday and Saturday. Nothing, nothing on Saturday, but uh, there were potential discussions of collusion out that occurred outside the physical event. How they heard mm-hmm. about these, I don't know. That seems where they are aware of these happening outside of the event, but can't act on it. Interesting. Uh, Sunday reports of sale of equity in players uh, towards the end of the event. As we approach the top eight matches, the head judge was instructed not to allow any discussions about splitting of prizes. No prize redistributions be approved, nor would the dark ritual be a, a splittable prize. It's a card. We go to the player uh, who placed first in the event. Also reiterated that the first place prize for this event is not money, nor the equivalent value of a card. It is the card. The event winner would like to sell their prize after the event. That is their business, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I received reports that, again, there is a discussion about people swooping, uh, scooping people in, involved in this collusion into the top eight to increase the likelihood of them winning. This time it was overheard by a judge and immediately brought to me. Unfortunately, while this judge saw what the player looked like, they did not manage to catch the player's name, nor which of the players. Uh, so this seems like this is a player that was outside of the top eight, uh, but uh, that they had slash they knew had scooped into the top eight as part of equity split. 
Uh, at this time, I asked head judges, the head judge of the event, to make it clear that players were not to speak to spectators at this time. So I think this is where the original poster gets into trouble because they said, you know, as the event staff says, don't talk to, no talking to spectators. We're not allowing you to talk to spectators at this time because obviously yeah. they want to bar like any kind of equity splits. So it's probably mm-hmm. at this point where the judge see the judge sees this conversation and goes, Hey, what's going on here? And like, nothing, nothing's, nothing's happening. And it's like, but we told you not to do this. So like, yeah, 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 we said, we said, we said, don't talk to anybody outside the tournament. Why are you talking to somebody outside the tournament? Uh, penalty being assessed, uh, between top, uh, between the top eight and top four rounds is appropriately applied to top four and not retroactively applied to the completed top eight. A match loss is a functionally different than disqualification as the player in question would still receive the prizes earned for reaching top four of the event and wizards would take no further action such as suspension towards this player. So that is important. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, like the original poster is not dq'd uh and then uh we did not have any sufficient evidence to apply a cheating dq to a single player or group of players at this time no disqualifications from gen con 2024 in any events across the weekend i hope this report provides clarity and blah 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 so bill this is a whole mess that has this had is a big mess a storm what do you think yeah so like It's like when I read the first statement that came out, I was a little bit like, oh, my God, what the heck is going on here? Mm. But like reading through the the tournament organizers poorly stated statement and then the actual person who was like running the event, mm-hmm. um, it's definitely sounding just like they were just having a lot of problems around like just the equity in general because of this dark ritual this dark ritual is like 50 uh, it, it's a fifty thousand dollar card 100 it's yep. gonna it's gonna be extremely sought after people are gonna want to get that and do anything they can to get their their hands on that's like that's some people's salary yeah right that is a like, life-changing that's, amount that's, of money that, that yes there's a life-changing amount of money for a single card um after hearing like because you know the first initial post did not say we were not we were told to not talk to people outside the tournament right Mm -hmm. that wasn't said correct so hearing that they were told that if it like i'm just taking that everybody's talking the truth at this point right like that's unfortunate that he he spoke to somebody outside because they they were told not to and he did. He 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 went yeah. against what, bro, what he the bro, like, rules were. Yeah. Um, this did get me kind of thinking, though, a lot about like intentional draws. Like, I I hate intentional draws at times. Sure. Uh, specifically like that. Well, like RCQ. yeah, at the, at the Pittsburgh RCQ that we went to, where player, the, yeah. the two players are just like, we're just gonna both intentionally draw because we don't want a team kill. And and, like, and, <sighs> and and that's just that's that's why I was out of the. <laughs> yeah, out of the yeah, that was. Yeah, that's um, I, I understand that from your perspective. I, I it's 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 just it feels bad. Uh, again, like looking through these rules, so like it, you know, people are are stating like saying things here and there about rules and bribery and like there's there's nothing in the official like Watsy um rules for the game when it comes to bribery and stuff. But uh if you search for the REL rules and then they reference the Magic Judge rules resources, uh which is like blogs.magicjudges.org. Um, there's there's an entire section on unsporting conduct, bribery, and wagering. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's literally in exchange. You make an exchange for something, right? Uh, it's not necessarily a team of people in a car driving to a tournament saying, "Oh, we'll split the the prize when we get there," or like whoever wins. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, 
Um, it does not, uh, again, though, also bribery and wagering. That's just a match loss. It's right. Not an actual... So the, the penalty was yeah. seemingly correctly applied. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it's, it seems like it was correctly applied. They're having problems with it. The, the, these judges, the, these judge programs, like whoever's running these judges, all of them seem to just have really, really bad communication skills. Mm-hmm. As far as this is your penalty, this is why you are getting this. You're trying to appeal it. Okay, well, let's go talk to the head judge. It just seems like whenever it's, oh, there's a thing. For some reason, people just go away and then come back and try to appeal it. Instead of just like trying to appeal it right then and there with with the yeah. judge that's bringing it to them. Right. So I, I don't know like what's going on there with that. Um, if like if they said, let's go talk to the head judge about this. Let's try to get this cleared up. If that would change anything instead of walking away and then coming back. Well, so here's the thing. The head judge is the one that uh, like gave them the ruling that they were receiving the match loss. So that's okay. why they tried to appeal to the to the event organizer. But as you know. Uh, what's said at the beginning of every event is the head judge goes, I have final say. So, yeah, if the head judge yep. is the one issuing you the penalty, then there is no appeal. You appeal to nothing. Yeah, um, which kind of sucks. Actually, um, you, I think you appeal to them, but I don't know how that appeal process will would work, considering the fact that they're the one who issued the punishment in the first place. Maybe maybe you like try to make your case, just ask to make your case, yeah, like in a respectful like, way. <laughs> but like if they're if they've already heard your case, like what? If it just feels like nothing. If they've already heard your case, or they're the one that witnessed it, then like it, I, I think you, you're just bone. You just gotta, yeah. you just gotta take it. Like it sucks. It sucks so bad. Uh, I think that there's there just needs to be a lot of communication that happens. I think from these judges and these groups of judges and the head judges on like, especially when like, it's something like that. Like if somebody's getting a match loss for something that's clearly like outside of what a normal match loss should get. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I've seen people get match losses because they, they had cards in their sideboard that were the same color, like for their deck or whatever. Yeah. Right. Uh, because it was like a promo or something that they bought earlier. That, like that to me is a clear reason. Oh, yep, I got a match loss for that. That's that's a good reason why I got match loss. Uh, it's these gray area ones, right, where they need to not be maybe as maybe have a little more of a human side to the judging, yeah. right? Because I, I think the other one, um, it was the opponent wanted to just see what their next card would be. Yeah, but the that judge one from like a couple it. months ago. Yeah, a couple months ago, uh, but the judge heard it as collusion. Yeah, when it it like it really wasn't right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like it, it, in, in my opinion, it's it just sucks and there just needs to be more co- communication. Like they broke the rule that was stated of don't talk to people outside the event. Yeah. Um, so for this, my take is this, uh, either the pricing needs to get fixed in some kind of way, because like everyone, everyone's pointed this out. And I, I, I will say that uh, a lot of you are missing the point with a uh, part of the point too. uh, just for winning your pod, uh, the secret, the, like the, fil- the filter secret layer showdown qualifiers, uh, just for winning your mm-hmm. pod, you get like a thirteen hundred dollar Merted region. Yeah, you know it's a lot. It's a lot of money. It, yeah, it's not fifty thousand dollars, but you're still getting like a Merted region that's worth a your hotel. Of money your hotel for the weekend is probably paid for. Yeah, I, I'm and I'm gonna double check the price on that because I don't like last I saw it was like thirteen hundred dollars, but who knows now? But like. Yeah. When, so when I see people go, uh, saying like, oh, second place gets nothing. And it's like, I mean, comparatively, yes, you're right. <laughs> they do get nothing. But like in actuality, 
Uh, no, they they don't get nothing. They get like a Merktide plus like uh, a bunch of other stuff. I can't remember what exactly what it is. Oh, no, it's not even thirteen hundred dollars. It's like three grand. It's three grand. Yeah. Oh, my so, God. Like, it, it's not they're They're not receiving nothing. They're receiving a three thousand a, a card valued at three thousand yeah. uh, dollars. Plus, like secret layers and shit like I like uh, I don't remember Boxes. exactly. How many you got? What you got? Like a whole box, right? I got a whole box. You got. Uh, yeah. If I made I got an half, additional I got half a box, if I yeah. made it another round, I would have gotten two boxes. I also got a secret layer from that. Yeah, you did get a secret layer. I, I think you would have gotten I another got a box secret, and a secret layer. layer. I would have gotten two boxes and two secret layers, and then I would. Then there's the Merktide region. That was the that was the final yeah. prize. And then there were. If I'm remembering the the prize structure correctly, it was just like more and more secret layers for everything else and then it was you know plus the merc tide like you the merc tide yeah. was the prize for winning the 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 filter in and the secret layers were like added on top of that like so like again maybe the secret layers maybe they're like a thousand dollars in total yeah but you're still getting like a three thousand dollar like i i like the argument that no, you get nothing that they're getting nothing place, yeah. that's wrong you're just wrong i'm sorry you're you're wrong like that's just disingenuous and incorrect as for the way the the tournament went i understand it's weird that they were like hey don't talk to fucking anybody like you we're not allowing conversing with spectators like it's just not like we we can't have it yeah like it's weird but i also understand it considering the fact that they like received multiple reports of potential collusion and yeah. gambling when it comes to the like the outcome of this secret lair showdown right well and that's the thing too right like this is like a like expensive event that people are participating in like yeah come on like you can't just not expect this either as an event organizer so maybe like the secret layer showdown area be more sectioned off and if you've yeah. been eliminated you're not allowed there anymore yeah something like, like that yeah because w- when you and i were there like we were able to just watch people play over their shoulders we could have easily been influencing people oh 100 or helping them cheat or whatever yeah that's why I always stood over your like oh, behind you because I didn't want you to see any of my faces and be like, right. Yikes. Uh, most of the time <laughs> yeah. me being like, yikes. Uh, but like, yeah, it's that, uh, like that whole area from when we were in magic on, it was just in like the play area and that's mm-hmm. fine. But like, if you know that there's issues like, yeah, like you said, section it off, like get like, Find a spot and just be like, this is the area. No outside players. Once your game is over, leave the air or like uh, yeah. if you've lost, leave the area. If you've won, stay in the area. That kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, I don't what there's. One more magic on this year and it's in Las Vegas. Yeah, where gambling's legal. <laughs> gambling is legal but like so like what how, yeah. does it does this change anything because i think it's also pastime events running this event too so like what probably what changes are they going to make to this to this event because they have you have to make changes now now that you've seen with your own eyes multiple collusion attempts yeah you have to do something yeah yeah maybe maybe just make it like part of the contract that you sign like if there's or not contract, but like when you enter, you just click your, your in, terms I, of service I when you enter. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Although the the TOS. thing with that is like people have likely like I signed up for the, like my two immediately. Like the second I could, yeah. I signed up for them. And still, they uh, what what's funny is they still weren't full. None of them were full That's when we went to hilarious. Chicago. Hilarious, I know, because modern was a dead format. Now it's better. Yeah, yeah El Drazi now. Well, yeah, uh, we have Nadu oh, now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great now. But like, I don't know. In in terms of like what happened to this person, yeah, it sucks. But like, also, you just didn't listen to the judge. Like, sorry, the judge told you, don't do this, and yeah. you explicitly did it. So like, 
Yeah, like it, as soon as you saw your friend coming over, you should just be like, no, you no, should no, be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> see you, man. Yeah, because like, like I feel like if that up, judge I can't saw, talk to you, I can't yeah. talk to you. Go away. Yeah, like if the judge saw you probably making an effort to avoid that person, they probably would have been all right. Yeah, you probably would never have been approached. Yeah, the judge probably never would have DQ'd you. So like, I don't yeah. know. Like, I understand you're upset, but like, you got a a Merktide regent. And whatever yeah. other prizing went with the Merktide Regent, probably in the value yep. of like four, th- four to five thousand dollars worth of of potential cardboard. So like, yeah. yes. So, well, some of those secret layers are like pricey. Yeah, I don't know what one it would be. It it did change depending on which one you what level you got to. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know what it. I don't know what it would have been. But yeah. yeah, you know, so it's yeah. a, it's a tough situation. There definitely need to be more communication from pastimes to to the player. Everyone's saying like pastimes needs to put out a statement now explaining the their side of the situation. No, no, no yeah. Why they weren't the the people who like there was the, the person the to head put judge. out something. And it's like, no, no one needs to put out anything like, yeah, they don't. Yeah, you're you aren't owed anything. By yeah, the way. You as the public are owed nothing. The player should have been yeah. offered more of an explanation as to what the fuck happened. Uh, yes, and as exactly. We before, players only like divulge the information that makes them look good, like flashback to the the one the I w- oh I want to look at the top card of my deck thing. The player yeah. divulged that like only divulged stuff that made them look good. And it's like, no, it turns out they were like throwing shit and kind of having a fucking yeah, which is which, which I never heard. Right. They, like they never said. And uh, but like it turns out they were actually having a fucking temper tantrum because they got DQ'd. So like. You yeah. know, like. Yeah, what the heck? Yeah. Like, but like it sucks that you get DQ'd, but like you can't just be an idiot. Yeah. But it, it's along those same lines where it's like, "Oh, I got a match loss, obviously, but I don't feel like I did anything wrong." And it's like, "Yeah, under normal under normal circumstances of talking to your friend, you didn't do anything wrong. However, you were told not to talk to your friend, so you did something right. wrong." Right. So, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I I hate I hate people. <laughs> it's 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 terrible and i'm sorry that he got dq'd uh because i i think he is like a nice guy yeah um, i think you just played against him actually right uh yeah i played against him on mtgo in a uh in my 5-0 legacy burn yeah league. yeah you uh yeah. we we didn't mention it but you played against uh young dingo in i did play one, uh, on dingo. one of his streams i watched it it wasn't it wasn't some of the worst gameplay i've ever seen so i was proud of you i i felt like i did pretty good for that being my first no second league with the with the deck so uh boros energy slam shit and go yeah <laughs> uh and dingo is playing like uh chitoni nightmare Sam's- Samwise combo. Yeah, like reanimator cat food combo thing. It was yeah. cool, but like it's too up. fragile of a combo for modern in my opinion. But of course, that was just the one game I watched a bit. So but he he dumpstered the next Boros Energy guy, uh-huh. like, which was directly after me. Uh-huh. Oh, that poor man. That poor player. Yeah. They they get dumpstered because of you. It's your fault. Yeah, he took oh. out his frustrations yeah. on them. <laughs> Uh, so One Piece ban list time this is going to be again me monologuing for a bit. So the One Piece ban list for Japan is coming out on August twelfth. Um, the prevailing wisdom is that uh, a ban will happen to the current best deck in the format of Red Purple Law, likely in the ban- with the banning of the car the leader card itself, Red Purple Law. And uh, boy, let me tell you what Dan hates more than anything else in One Piece: leader bands. I think leader bands are stupid. Uh, Sucks. Because you just like th- like there's just whole 
pieces, game pieces that are now no longer useful because you've banned an entire leader. Like, yeah, I understand. Like Sakazuki got banned last format and it's currently still banned and might get unbanned. I don't know. We'll see. But it got banned and like there's this whole set of blue Navy cards that it's just like, or like blue cards that we're seeing play that now like nobody wants. Cause the, the leader's fucking useless now. Damn. And like, I kind of feel like the same problem is going to happen with red purple law where like red purple law gets banned. Like who, like no one's going to play Shachi Pen- like Shachi penguin, which I, it's not already not a very expensive card, but like no one's going to play that. No one's going to play Gordon. No one's going to play race max. Like, <laughs> There, but like there is just like good purple and red stuff in the deck already that is going to see play. Uh, Ein's not going to see play ever again, as long as that leader's banned. Uh, so like, I don't know. I I just feel like there's better ways that they can go about it. Of course, like the the most broken card in the in the deck right now is this card called Black Maria. It's a three cost two K that says, uh, on your turn activate main, and then uh. Uh, add five rested dawn from your dawn deck to your battlefield. Now, five rested dawn, you're just kind of like, that's that's fine. Who cares? But what? It's tapped lands. It's ta- they're tapped lands. Who and uh, also the, lands. the second part of the effect is uh, at the end of your turn, return dawn uh, to your dawn deck until you reach the same amount of dawn. Your uh, until you reach equal dawn with your opponent, and you're like, well, that's not that strong. But then you read uh, Red Purple Laws Effect where it's like, all right, uh, oh, minus three bottom deck, uh, 3K power or less. Oh, so you get the, or and then cheat out a four cost. Oh, well, OK, <laughs> so you're just saying like I can play Black Maria, bring out five Dawn, cheat out a four cost and then pass. And then, like, I'm not punished for that on turn three. Because on turn three, normally what happens is you, if you go, like, a three-cost character, bottom, uh, uh, use leader effect, and remove three Dawn, if you don't at least go back up two Dawn with a Shachi Penguin, you are so behind for the rest of the game. And Black Maria is just like, who cares? I'm a three-cost. Uh, here's a four, here's my four-cost friend. It's just here now. <laughs> it's just here. It's just here now. Who cares? <laughs> like that card's broken in, in Red Purple Law, and it just needed to be leader locked, and it wasn't. So, like the hope, fingers crossed, is that it just gets leader locked to uh, what is it? Animal Kingdom Pirates. If it's just leader locked to Animal Kingdom Pirates, everyone would be happy. Everyone would be so excited about that. It'd be great. <laughs> but it's not. So it broke Red Purple Law because now like the way Red Purple Law used to play is like, okay, it doesn't have a hand and sometimes they're like really low on Dawn. Well, with Black Maria, it's just like they're never low on Dawn and now they'll just have a hand like maybe now they just don't have a hand. But it doesn't matter because they have like way more board presence because they just get to do shit for free. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? So like that's that's the card that actually should just go. But like it's a new card, so I feel like they're going to not do that and then just ban the leader, which, again, I think sucks. Um, Eight cost Gecko Moria is also likely going to get banned. And the, we, if the that one that's happened, in my black yellow Luffy deck, black yellow Luffy dies immediately. Like people are like, oh, no, um, it's probably still playable. It's like well, you're fucking on crack. You're you're actually an insane person. If you think that black yellow Luffy is still playable. Dan, I'm so scared now to even sign up for any of the treasure cups. Um, the, like... the ban list likely won't take effect for us here in the West until later. But like, I know a lot of people. Oh, like, okay. I want it to take place for us like right now, like, like with the release of set nine, set ni- or like with the release of set eight in September. Uh, we better we better get that ban list like right then and there. And it's like, eh, guys, no, just play the format because like going into the OPO seven format, everyone was like, well, Red Purple Law is going to be the best deck in the format, right? And Red Purple Law is like a good deck, but like people are so prepared for it that they know how to play around it. And people were actually stopping playing red purple law in OPO seven because of how prepared everybody else is. So it's like, all right, well the meta says this, but like, if you just, you know, look at the historical evidence, that's not true, but 
But yeah, Gecko Moria, if that gets banned or leader locked, Black Eel Luffy is dead. Dead. Dead, dead. Yeah. Which sucks a lot. And that's kind of why I also don't want it to get banned. Uh, even a restriction, I think, because they, they've done restrictions in the past. A restriction to one would kill Black Elf Luffy, too. That'd be yeah, it'd be horrendous. Yeah, they, they, they wouldn't like that's the whole thing is like being able to like play that back. Play the back, like all become your, a 9K all leader, get like cycle through your hand or like get two 7K swings or whatever. But now it's just like, uh, OK, this deck has this deck has to like kill you immediately or else it dies. And like it doesn't even do kill you immediately good. So like, yeah, the deck just sucks. Like, so I don't know. Sucks. Uh, and then other black decks will suffer like Lucci, black, uh, OPO seven Lucci would kind of suffer, but it's still pretty good. Um, Gecko Moria leader. I, I actually would probably rise in stock because, uh, the deck doesn't need Gecko Moria. Like it can use Gecko Moria, but like it, it wants to do much more things on like it's, eight and ten eight nine ten dawn turns and just slam mm-hmm. moria because it just wants to apply pressure with its characters and if right. you can't invest dawn onto your characters to apply pressure what are they there for because like gecko <laughs> is just like here's eight dawn uh i get a couple things back and it's like that's great but like where's your pressure you don't have any yeah and you can't leader effect and gecko mori on the same turn so i'm just kind of kind of boned um other things four cost black Rebecca uh just being able to go play a car play a card get back a card from trash play out another card and then play the card you just picked up from trash really good um the card from trash generally being uh five cost Sabo another card people want banned um I've seen arguments for the new 10 cost ace from opio 7 I've seen arguments for uh some number of cards from the deck Nami, which is just Lab Man deck dot deck that got a boost yeah. uh, from a new engine. Uh, I've seen that's about it is generally just like leader red, pur- red, purple law leader, black Maria, gecko Moria, and then like tangentially Rebecca Sabo ace and then like something from Nami. Yeah. And if they did all of that, if they did all seven of those things or even just like because it has to be like either Red Purple Law or Black Maria, it can't be both. It should not be both. It has to be one or the other. So like if they did six of those things, I think a lot of people would be like, cool ban list, except for like cool the black players, because it's like, oh, God, not a Rebecca and Sabo. Like I, those are the cards I probably want banned the least. The Sabo, I need the Sabos. Yeah, like twenty five dollars right now. I just sold my, so I I pulled an extra one. I sold one of them, so I was like, let's go. But like, so for the ban list, I have I'd, the Sabos. I'd rather them just go like leader lock, uh, leader lock, uh, Black Maria to Animal Kingdom Pirates, and then that's it, like. If they lead a lock, if they lead a lock, Echo Moria or ban Moria or restrict Moria, Black Yellow Luffy is just dead for no reason. And it's like, that's that's Thanks terrible. Thanks for making this. And now I can't play it anymore. Yeah, now you can't play it anymore. But I don't know. We'll see. I will likely make a video uh, if Bill wants to hop on and uh, like kind of direct traffic for that one. He can, but uh, we'll see. But yeah, uh the ban list is going to be interesting. There's very few things I actually want banned. Uh, I think if we're going to ban any leader at all, it should be a Nell because the play patterns to that deck are egregious and gross. But even then, I'm just like, eh, I, I just have to play better. So, yeah, I don't know. That's my that's that's all. Generally, my thing for the most part is uh, everybody just play better. <laughs> They just play and better. Maybe, maybe we don't have to ban some of this shit, but in, like, if it's too format warping, like, obviously, like, Nadu is too format warping. And along those lines, Red Purple Law over in uh, the Asian countries are, is like way too format warping, although it's like yeah. slightly correcting. But like, there's data points that show like 150 
red purple law decks have top 32 events and the next highest is like 50 something so oh my like god three times more represented than the next best deck like it's a tier zero format and in tier zero formats you have to deal with the tier zero deck or else like right you, you risk losing your player base right yeah because like nobody was like the mirrors are sometimes the worst things to play i can't play the mirror i I tried playing the red purple law mirror and i just get cooked every time i hate it it's the worst you get cooked that's why it like the reason smooth. why i didn't get my qualify well it's not the reason why i didn't get my qualification i it's the pr- it's a primary reason why i didn't get my qualification is because i did i played the mirror in my sixth round oof although again i still think i wasn't making getting my qualification because of my fucking breakers oof <laughs> yeah but that's a different story so yeah uh look out for i mean you're probably watching this and then watching that video or even like that you're watching that video first and then coming to this but uh we'll see final prediction for that uh actual prediction red purple law band gecko moria band and then uh something from yellow is also hit because yellow ascends the throne if like black gets if black and red purple law get hit uh yell like anel just ascends and becomes too good so something has to get hit from anel i don't know what but i'm going to just i'm gonna say like is it ace oh actually you know what i want it to be is uh zero cost event ban zero cost event zero cost event has a trigger that says uh trigger if you have no life gain one life and then the way it stacks with an L is that like that trigger goes on. So they get their first life, but then the Anel trigger is also sat- still happening. Uh, the, the Anel leader effect is still happening. So you actually get two life if you, that's your, your last life for Manel. <laughs> and it's like, oh, so I did all that work for fucking nothing. Great. Awesome. Gosh, I love this dang. Game. So yeah, uh, zero cost event. Perfect. Uh, yellow zero cost event. Uh, you're the one who should disappear. That's what it's called. Yeah, that's it. Those are those are the event. The, those are the three that uh, I think are going to get hit. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully my my black yellow Luffy just is untouched. I was talking about it with somebody at locals, and we were like, if if Moria does go, they have to print a card that says, uh, it, it's it has to be specifically like eight it, it it would have to be like specific to the archetype it would have to be like a yellow card or like a black card that says like uh like it, it would just be gecko moria but for the babies it'd be like uh <laughs> eight cost 9k curly to dawn because that's thematic and um yeah whatever the what it, What's thematic essentially? But oh, flavorful. That's it. Uh, flavorful. Flavor. Flavorful. If it's curly to dawn, uh, a cost nine k. It says, or even a cost eight k or something with counter. I I think you'd be okay with counter at a cost eight k. Uh, on play, play up to two of any two cost uh yellow Sabo Ace or Luffy characters from your trash, <laughs> because like. You have you want the eight dawn play. You still want the eight dawn that goes play babies, and then for two attach two dawn to your leader. You know, do the do the leader effect bullshit thing. Like you still want that, so that card has to get printed if uh, Gecko Moria goes. So I hope Bandai is listening. Make that card. Yeah. Damn. That's it. Uh, that's all I have to say on one piece. Uh, thank you for your listening to me ramble on that. And thank you for listening to this entire episode of Stacking Triggers. Uh, what do you think about the Gen Con fiasco? What are your thoughts on that as a as a regular player? Uh, what are you playing for your RCQs? Have you played in the RCQs? Are you just waiting until the ban on, on August 26th <laughs> to play in your RCQs? Let us know. And uh, let us know if there's a sleeper deck that we're not thinking of for post RCQ or post Nadu ban RCQ seasons. Because, uh, yeah, Dan's going to be on Merktide for pretty much almost all of it, unless uh, Merktide starts hating me for some reason. Dan, nobody said the bird's getting banned. Come on. That's true. Lame Nadu format. Just gonna... <laughs> Format's fine. No changes. Could you? Could you imagine? 
Could you oh, fucking imagine man. the like? I I actually I think actually at that point I would not go to any RCQs. Like really? I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not kidding. Like I I don't think a meta centralization that strong. Like because like I said, my RCQ five out of the eight in top eight was not you. Like I I don't think I could legitimately play in that that format. Like I I'm, I'm willing to eat it for three weeks. Yeah. Or even four weeks. I'm willing to eat it. But like, that's it. Like, you have your window. If it doesn't happen, you've fucked it entirely. Yeah. It's crazy. But, yes. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching or listening. Uh, we really appreciate it. And until the next time, this is Dan saying, keep calm, spike on.